welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. So, some of you may have guessed, I'm in a massive greenhouse. And this is the greenhouse which is right near my work. And um, some of you may remember that a lot of the carnivorous plants have gone from outside uh, in the bog garden at my house. And my collection, which was expanding slowly, has also been taken away. Uh, and for the main reason, I've actually been given some space in this enormous greenhouse, which is two second walk away from my, uh, from my office, my desk where I sit. So it's super, super convenient. Now it's approximately the size of two football pitches. It's huge in here. And I'm using about 1 20th maybe of that. So I've been giving a little single bench over in a corner on this side of the greenhouse. We're going to go and have a look at where I've moved all of my carnivorous plants to. So I'll grab you guys up. We'll have a wander over there. Uh, have a look at those. And then also we'll have a look at some of the cymbidiums, which are part of the collection here um, in the greenhouse as well. So uh, bear with and we'll trundle over there. Okay, so here we are over at my little tiny bench in the corner of the greenhouse. This is where I've moved a lot of my plants to and I've got just enough room between the microphone and you guys in the camera over there as well to stretch over uh, so we can have a look at some of these plants. So I've got one of these benches which is on wheels so things can be moved around and what I've done is I've covered it with pond liner and filled it full of water because having this much glass above your heads all of this rainwater is collected in a big tank over in the corner of the greenhouse over there. So we've got nice fresh rainwater to use and lots of the plants need to be doing really, really well. Now most of these divisions have all been taken out of the bog garden, which was at my house, which is just, it's just a butler sink full of earth at the moment. We are going to be restocking that using some of these plants as well. And some of the, some of the plants I picked up from the Hampshire carnivorous plants, Open Day, are also growing here. And they've, they've come on a long way. They seem really, really happy. So we'll be have a look at those in a minute. I'll grab you guys. We'll go down and have a little, little bit of a closer look. There's also quite a few of the sundews as well that I've divided up. Lots of Drosera bonata, which are really, really looking good. The Dicotoma giant's gone huge, and it's doing its flopping around all over the place at the moment. Some darling Tonia in here. So what I'll do is I'll pick you guys up, and we can wander around and have a look at these things and uh, see what you think. Okay, so directly in front of us, these are Saracenia oreophila cross rubra, also known as like Farhamii hybrid. This was just a plant that I was given. It was growing in the bog garden and uh, I just divided it. It basically took over everything, so I uh, took it out, divided it all up, and I've got, I don't know, six pots maybe of multiple crowns of this plant. And it's really, it's not quite coloured up yet, but it will be soon. If I uh, zoom in, we can have a look. Lots of flowers. I probably should have uh, cut them off to. Uh, encourage some bigger pictures but I've left them all on anyway so and they're starting to colour up they'll go a much lighter colour here and this veining will become a lot more uh, pronounced so we've got lots of those we've got a few more of them just over out of shot here as well there's some more just down there and lots and lots and lots of flowers going all the way along there directly in front of us this is Saracenia maroon um, some of the older pictures are left and once again this is something that I was given and it was not in the bog garden it was just in some pots um, on top of where I store my compost and it was sort of struggling away it wasn't really very happy in there so I divided it up in there because it become a great big clump and I divided that, divided that into about I don't know about 10 plants and then there's lots of new growth coming as well um, which I haven't quite developed yet and they're starting to take on that really dark maroon color from where this hybrid gets its name from um, but yeah, really, really happy with those guys. Slightly over to the right, we've got, this was just a monster. This is basically why I ended up dismantling the bog garden because Saracenia purpurea, it's got a few spots. I, there was a few um, aphids on them. So I, I, I accidentally mixed up some pyrethrum in too rich a concentration and nuked some of the newer foliage. So some of the newer pictures have got these weird little spots on them. If I zoom you in in a minute, you'll see. But anyway, back to this. So the reason I repotted the or took the um, uh, bog garden to bits was because this thing is just like a marching army. It was just taking over everything in the in the. It was just a bog garden that consisted of one giant Saracenia purpurea plant. But if I zoom in, you should be able to see some of the weird coloration or the damage that was made. I think it just about sit. They see these weird circle lines here. What happened was I basically sprayed it on and it's like an oily substance. So I think it just acted like a magnifying glass and it's left these little marks of some of the newer pictures, which is pff, not the end of the world. I mean, I need to go through these again with a pair of secateurs and snip out all the dead 
um, and manky pictures so there's a bit more room for the newer ones to come through anyway but it's still a shame because obviously it's I've waited a while for this new growth to come through and then I've disfigured it by spraying it with a, a rich pyrethrum mix directly in front of us we've got a nice newly opened um, Saracenia cross cat SB cat SB I can never pronounce that correctly but these guys have just opened and these were growing in the bog garden as well but they were being completely swamped by the purpurea so I removed them from the bog garden and divided them up and I've got I don't know five or six little pots of them now I need to, once again I need to go through and just get rid of some of these old dead phyla clades off of some of these other Saracenias um, but these guys are lots of profuse growth. There seems to be a lot happening out there in the greenhouse. And there's some shade cover up, like my greenhouse at uh, home. This has also got some of the XLS fire break that you can just see above us there, which is providing a little bit of shade uh, to the greenhouse because it does get, especially this side, considering that uh, west facing is that way out the greenhouse, these guys get a lot of light during the end of the day. So it's probably not a bad thing. We're providing a bit of supplementary shade. Centre of shot with fly in place. Oh, there he goes. We've got Saracenia leucophyllocloss oreophylla. This is one of the first plants I bought from um, from Hampshire Carnivorous Plants. I bought it ages and ages ago, and it was in the bog garden. It wasn't doing very, very well, um, and I wanted to really get it out of there. So as everything else was coming out, this guy got dug up as well, got cut right back to the crowns. So there was very little of it left, and. Um, I divided it up, popped it in here, and we've got three pots of this now. Some of these are going to be going into the bog garden when we redo it, because I'm just going to put Saracenius, no purpurea. Purpurea is not allowed in my bog garden. It becomes too much. It's just, even with pruning, it had been in there two years, and I pruned it so many times, it was just unstoppable, which is fascinating for the, you know, uh, and fair play to the plant for being that virulent, but it's just not for me. So these guys have got quite big, so they start, they, they're growing in pots, which are way down there in the water. So I'm going to shoot, they're about two and a half foot, two foot to two and a half foot. There's a bit of backlighting here, but if we zoom in, we should get a bit of a closer look. You can really see the red veins, which are starting to come through um, on the throat of these plants. And they're really, really nice, really happy with these. Lots of big flowers, very pale yellow flowers. If we look up there, you can see some of those, which are just out of shot up there. So yeah, next time I shall cut them off. Okay, so unfortunately, we've got a big thunderstorm coming over, so the light's really, really gone down, which is going to make seeing these a little bit more tricky. But uh, if I zoom in, you guys are going to get the rough idea of what we're looking at. So these are three representations of Saracenia leucophylla. This is Pensacola, this one here. Obviously, the, the uh, Deer Park, Alabama, with the very, very deeply veined lid here. And then this is a Saracenia leucophylla giant. So this is... Um, a, a, a division of um, Matt Soper's largest growing plant. Uh, so I'm expecting big things from this in maturity. We can zoom in and have a little look at those. So this is Leucophylla giant, which it hasn't got the same sort of red veining as the Deer Park. And then the newest picture on the Deer Park is just here. If you follow me on Instagram, I've posted pictures of these plants already. And then right over on the right hand side we've got Pensacola which is actually pretty big itself, centre of shot and it's sort of halfway between, it's halfway between the Leucophylla giant which looks like that, so no red veining but lots of white windows. And then the Pensacola which has kind of got, it's not as deeply red veined as the um, Deer Park Alabama but it's sort of like in between so it's still quite pale in coloration. Um, and that, that, this guy's probably about two, two foot tall. It's almost as big as the Leucophylla cross oreophylla. So there's a rumble of thunder in the background. So yeah, they're doing well, growing quite happily here in the greenhouse. Okay, so over on this side of the greenhouse, where I tend to grow most of the Drosera, um, it gets a little bit more light over here. Uh, but I've also got the, I've also got the opportunity. I've got some. Um, not crates, pallets behind me which are stacked here. So if it does get a bit bright, we can just wheel the whole thing back like this and give, it, give these guys a bit of shade because plants like the Philiformis tracei, it gets a bit too hot for them and they, they start to sulk a little bit. So uh, that's part and parcel of why they're over this side. So I can still give those guys full sun and move the tray over this side. So what is, I'll grab you guys, we'll come down and have a look at what's going on in here because there's quite a few things. Something I thought I killed, which is also seems to be making a real comeback. So we'll have a look at that. 
Okay, so directly in front of you, we've got Drossa filiformis vartraceae. These guys are catching loads and loads and loads of insects in the greenhouse. Um, they were getting a little bit too hot as well, so I've backed them off. I've moved them slightly further away from the glass, uh, and they've become a much lusher, greener colour with a lot more dew, especially as it's so humid. We've got a thunderstorm rumbling overhead at the moment, which maybe or may not be being picked up on the microphone, but these guys are doing really, really well. Over the side, I don't know if you're going to be able to see them. Oh, you might just, you might see the top of them just peeking up. So those are Drossa of Venusta, and these guys were doing really badly in my terrarium in my office. So they got hoiked out. I hope it's going to zoom in on them. There we go. And so these guys were doing really, really badly. So they've been moved out here where it's a little bit cooler. It's a bit more humid as well and a little bit more conducive to them being happy. Since then, they've dewed up. This guy sort of died right back, but it's pretty, I can see new leaves getting ready to unfurl. So I think it's going to be OK. If we turn right, we can have a bit of a close up zoom through, look at the forest of Drosera filiformis tracei. So you can see some of the new leaves unfurling. There's some flower spikes as well. And then each one of those brown patches without dew on the leaves is where it's in the process of dissolving some unfortunate hapless prey. And there are the crowns of the plants. Centre of shot we've got some pygmy Drosera. This is Drosera oxyzentalis subspecies Occidentalis, and this is Drosera platystigma. Now, all of these plants are producing gemme because it's been super warm in the greenhouse and they've caught a lot of food in that time, but they're now producing loads and loads of gemme. So, I need to take these guys home and take a load of these out, sow them ready for, uh, for winter when they'll start growing again because they're lovely, lovely little plants and they were a gift as well. So, definitely want to collect as many of these up as I can and propagate with them. Um, and they grow out here. I'm going about to move my Drosera scorpioides out here as well because it'll be a little bit more tolerant of the heat. Over to the right, if I zoom out so you can see stuff, we've got a little tray of my most undeveloped um, Darlingtonia seedlings. These are all grown from seed. And they got really hot, and I don't think they liked it very much. So they were sort of sulking, because compared to the ones which are in the greenhouse at home, the ones at home are doing really well. They're like three times the size of these guys. So I think it's just that little bit hotter in here. Uh, I've moved them away from the glass again to sort of help them out. And they seem to be picking up, so we've got some new growth which is emerging here and here, which is, seems to be a lot more vascular and a lot happier than some of the growth that was there before, which was a lot, lot weaker. Here's an interesting, uh, um, interesting look at some native and non-native Drosera here. We've got some rotunda, this rose rotunda folia. This is Drosera anglica. These came from um, Hampshire Carnivorous plants, but I basically they became so swamped by the Saracenia purpurea in the bog garden, I didn't actually believe there was any left in there. These were just tiny, tiny little plants which I took out and potted up. And since then, they've done very well. They seem to be a lot happier if we zoom in. You're probably going to be able to see them if it focuses at that range. Yeah, yes and no, it kind of does. Let's back it up a little bit. There we go. So anyway, these guys have done a lot better, a lot dewier, lots more growth. I think it's been getting a little bit warm in here, so they've sort of gone a bit, Ugh. but I think they'll pick up again when it cools down. Uh, the rotunda folia are here, and there's a big one there in the middle. And over this side here, this was also a gift from Dan Evans. Let's try and zoom in. It's hard to see because of the lighting here. You'll see from the, uh, this is Drosera nidiformis from Magdalesburg in South Africa. So this was a gift from Dan Evans as well. And it's been here in the greenhouse ever since. And it seems to be doing really well, very dewy, lots of new growth. Uh, and it's quite a prolific grower. I can also see some flower spikes coming on it. Before we get onto the tray of the bigger Drosera, which are over to our right, just out of shot, you can probably see them in the corner of the screen. This is what's left of my uh, uh, Pinguiclia vulgaris. They're here. Native butter works, native to the UK anyway, and they've sort of done with flowering, but it's considering they were only tiny geme when I planted them, they've come along really, really well. There's just the last vestiges of the flower up there as well. So some of these leaves have got pretty big now. There's my finger in comparison. So they're pretty sizable. Uh, they've gone sort of quite a pale buttery colour, probably as a result of just the high intensity light. They seem to be doing very well. I divided up my big Drosera banata, which had gone dormant in the garden. And that's what this massive cloud of stuff is here. 
Uh, these, these are what happened when I divided, and they look brilliant, very dewy. If we zoom right in like this and go on a little tour, you really see the complex detail of these plants. Absolutely stunning. It's just like a forest of Drosera banata. There's the thunder in the background, rumbling away. And they're really enjoying the extra space, fresh media, and higher light. And in fact, they've, they've sort of got more of an olive colour. They were much darker red um, a few weeks ago. They seem very happy. And finally, over the back, this is Drosera binata vardicotta magiant, and it has got, as the name suggests, huge. These are probably, they, all, they are actually bigger than my hand, a lot of these forked leaves now, and it's doing its classic thing of sort of flopping over into the water over there. It, it gets so big it can't actually sustain its own weight, so they sort of fall over, and then where they touch the water, like down in there, hopefully we're going to be able to see that. See where that leaf's gone in the water? That'll sprout and form little plantlets, so they root in the water, and then you can snip them off and plant them up, and it's a very quick way of propagating this species. But yeah, it's a massive plant. Okay, so I almost forgot to show you guys this before I signed off. This is behind me is uh, a pretty sizable Cymbidium collection. I reckon there's about, there's got to be 60 plants in here, all big mature to over mature plants in here. And um, unfortunately, we're not quite at that time of year when the flowers are in their prime. Everything's sort of finished now and is going over, but I can assure you, when these guys are in flats, really quite a sight in this area. Now the automatic misting system comes on twice a day here and gives these guys a good soaking of rainwater. And I think a well overdue repotting is uh, certainly on the cards in the short, well, in the not too distant future. I think I'm going to be getting involved with some of that as well. Because as some of you know, I can't grow cymbidiums. I certainly can't make them flower because my greenhouse is just too warm. So in fact, I'm actually going to be giving a few plants, well, moving some of the plants in here because I just can't, I haven't got, they take up too much room and I can't make them flower because I can't make them cold enough. So there isn't really much to see. There's, there's some flowers which are almost going over or what have gone over. We'll have a quick look at those and then we'll sign off. Okay, so we've been through the collection and basically the only thing that's worth marginally looking at is this cymbidium here. Now, most of these plants, we've got no idea what hybrid this is, but most of these plants are unidentified. They are not tagged. So if there's a cymbidium society out there, we'd like to come round uh, in about March and identify this enormous collection and tell us what's here. It'd be hugely appreciated because as you can see, it stretches for this, there's two entire bays of plants and they stretch right the way across there to the back. If I pick you guys up, it might give you an idea of what we're talking about. So yeah, loads and loads and loads of plants as far as you can see basically. Okay, so thanks for coming to visit me and the new plants in their new location. Um, the big plan is basically to just increase this collection as much as possible. We've got some, going to do some car boot sales, get rid of some of the plants, put some up on eBay, and then spend that money on buying more Saracenia and some other or interesting Drosera species. And these guys will just be left out here all winter. This is basically going to be their new home. So, and then one day start a nursery and take over the world. Fingers crossed. I don't think that's going to happen somehow. So thanks again. Thanks for joining us at Oliver's Greenhouse. Don't forget to hit a like if you enjoyed this video and also subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you get notified when I do any updates or uh, make any big announcements. So thanks for watching.